Today's short devotional is taken from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 2 through 6, and it talks about what the ravens bring. Let's take a look at the text together here. 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, as I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. By God's inspiration, the prophet Elijah proclaimed a drought, and there was a great threat to the northern kingdom of Israel into the reign of Ahab. Therefore, Elijah's life was in danger, and God sent him to the brook Cherith for his own safety. In this we see that God led Elijah one step at a time. He he didn't tell him to go to Cherith until he had first delivered the message to Ahab. He didn't tell him to go to Zarephath until the brook dried up at Cherith. God led Elijah by faith one step at a time, and Elijah followed in faith. Through the command, hide by the brook Cherith, God taught Elijah the value of a hidden life. He had just become famous as an adversary of Ahab, so mighty that his prayers could stop the rain. At the moment of his newfound fame, God wanted Elijah to hide and to be alone with God. It was a good antidote to the fearful but subtle temptations of success. The name Cherith comes from the ancient Hebrew root meaning to cut away or to cut up or off. This shows that God had some cutting to do in the life of Elijah during this period. God explained to Elijah, And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. You see, the escape to the brook Cherith was for more than protection. It was also to train Elijah in dependence upon the Lord. In a season of drought, he had to trust that God could keep this brook flowing. He also had to accept food from the ravens, which were unclean animals. Now, God also told the prophet, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. The emphasis in the Hebrew is on the word there. I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. You see, God promised that the ravens would feed Elijah as he stayed at Cherith. Of course, theoretically, the ravens could feed him anywhere. But God commanded that it be at Cherith. Elijah perhaps wanted to be somewhere else, or be preaching, or doing anything else, yet God wanted him there and would provide for him there. At that place, the ravens brought him bread and meat. Every bit of food that came to Elijah came from the beak of an unclean bird. Elijah had to put away his traditional ideas of clean and unclean, or he would die of starvation. Through this, God taught Elijah to emphasize the spirit of the law before the letter of the law. The great English preacher Charles Spurgeon drew two points of application from this event. He likened the food that the ravens brought to spiritual food. First, he recognized that God may bring a good word to us through an unclean vessel, spiritually unclean, like a raven. Second, he drew the principle that one can bring spiritual food to others and still be unclean spiritually themselves. Spurgeon said this, But see, too, how possible it is for us to carry bread and meat to God's servants and do some good things for his church and yet be ravens still. But make no mistake, the provision came, bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. As faithfully as he provided manna for Israel in the wilderness, God provided for Elijah's needs. He came to trust more than ever in the miraculous provision of God. Has God sent you to an isolated place? You can trust that he has a special way to provide for you there, though he might do it in an unusual way. Don't despise God's ravens.